Hi, I'm Dr. Richard, and I will be talking to you about Transformers. It's a little bit different than our normal lesson, so I appreciate your flexibility. So, Transformers are these giant robots that turn into automobiles. That would be this guy right here. He's an Autobot. And Decepticons, which I'm sorry if you just got really excited about a cartoon that came out in the late 90s. Well, sorry, early 90s, late 80s. But I grew up with these things, so I couldn't resist throwing them in. And now we have movies where they're really big. So what I am going to talk about are Transformers. But instead of kind, we will be talking about this kind. And this is the type you see at power plants. Normally they have a really nice little sign somewhere that says something to the effect of high voltage. And in the future, I will not be using yellow, because it does not show up so well. So, what do these things do? How do they work, and how can we use them? Okay. So what we have here is a schematic, and this schematic is a little more informative than the other picture. So we're going to go into how this actually works. So if we start by looking at this, you'll notice it says a soft iron core. When we say soft iron, we don't mean that it's physically soft. Getting hit in the head with a soft iron core hurts, much like getting hit in the head with anything made of iron. So don't do it. Safety first, you know, be a good person. But when we say soft iron, we mean that it is magnetically, magnetically soft. And remember when we talked about this, when we said magnetically soft, we meant things that domains, they change a lot. Soft magnets or soft iron core Magnets have domains, and those little pieces of electrons that line together, that will align. So what's going to happen? We run a voltage source right here, right here, through the primary winding. They call it the primary winding because it's attached to your source. All right. So let's make a little note of this. This is your source right there. So your source is on this side. And what happens when you run a current? around a wire, what is generated at the center of that current? That's right, a magnetic field. So you get a magnetic field that goes, let's say it's flowing this way, so your magnetic field flows this way, and it gets transmitted around the soft iron. So now it comes over to this side, and your magnetic field, or your flux through this room, changes. And what happens over here? You have a coil, you have a magnetic flux going through that coil. What's it do? I'll give you a minute to think about it. That's right. It induces another flux. So it changes the flux in that loop, which then makes an EMF, and we can use it. It's just like having a battery. And they call this a transformer, and we're going to show you why this is useful. Oh, and on a side note, I misspelled the word magnetically, but I was running out of room, so that was something I did. Uh, so sorry. So what we have here, we said that this source, you put a source here, has an electric current running through that wire, which induces a flux in the soft iron core, which then induces a field, or an EMF, electromotive force in this coil. Very important. What does your flux have to do in order to induce an EMF? That's right, it needs to change. So it's very important. What type of source has a current that always changes? That's right, it is an AC source. Okay, and it needs to be alternating so it's always changing. And the reason this is going to work is whose law was it? Whose was it? This guy right here. That is Faraday. That's a picture of him, because in PowerPoint I can draw you a picture of Faraday, whereas if I'm on the board, um, let's face it, I draw a car like that. I wouldn't have been able to do Faraday justice. But that's him. And if we review his laws, we say that E, which is your electromotive force, is equal to negative, that's from Lenz's law, remember, opposes the induced current's magnetic field opposes the change in flux, so that is D 
phi b d t. Just the change in flux and change in time. So let's examine these parts real quick. If we call this side 1, let's call this side side 1, we'll call this side side 2. In 1 is equal to the change in flux. Well, these cores, they have the same size. Same size. Remember magnetic flux? Let's go ahead and put the formula for flux on here. So magnetic flux is equal to BA cosine theta. So if we're looking at this, we'll call this again side one, side two. What you notice is that the iron core right here, same area. So same area, same magnetic fields. That means your change in flux one equals your change in your magnetic flux through coil two. So if we say that we'll find the ratio of E1 over E2 equals negative N1 I'll write this as change in phi B1 over uh, change in time negative N2, number of coils in N2 change in magnetic flux N2 over change in time Let's take a look at what cancels out. We'll notice the negatives go away. We said this time, same times passing through each circuit, and you'll notice the fluxes, which we said they have the same magnetic field, same area, flux is the same, so they cancel out. And you, and you wind up with the equation that E1 over E2 equals N1 over N2. And this is your equation for a transformer. Right? And you'll notice that all it depends on the ratio of voltages that you get, E1 and E2, just depend on N1 over N2, how many coils you have. So if N1 is greater than N2, N1 greater, N1 greater than N2, this means that E1 greater than E2, your EMFs are bigger, we call this a step down. Step down just means it lowers your voltage. All right? Voltage in 2 is less than the voltage on 1. Likewise, if it's the reverse, so if we get N2 greater than N1, this is a step up transformer. So how does this work? You're just changing the voltage. It looks like you're getting something for nothing. But can you get something for nothing? I think there's a law on it. If you think back, maybe something that rhymes with conservation of synergy. Hmm. Okay, so we just talked about how energy is always conserved. And if we remember from first semester that power is the rate at which energy is transferred we can remember that the power in coil 1 is equal to the power in coil 2. This is just because energy is conserved. It's the same. So if you're moving energy from one source to each other, you're moving the same source. So we're going to assume that no energy is lost, and you'll recall that electric power is the current times voltage. In this case, it is the current through the left side, your source coil, which equals the current times the voltage of coil 2. So your power is the same. So what happens if I increases? So let's say it's a step up conformer. So V1 is bigger than V2. Well that means I1 is smaller than I2. All right? So V2 is big. I guess we can write that out. So if you have big V2, little V1, this is the same as having little I2 big I1. All right. That I over here needs some work, so I'll do that. So your power is not the same. It's just a matter in how you do this. So let's talk about the benefit. You have a power plant right here, and it goes from the power plant 
to a transformer, and if you'll remember, power lines are high voltage, that's why they say danger, high voltage. So these are high voltage, so this would be a, what type of transformer? Step up, yes, because the voltage here is bigger than the voltage coming out. So they step up, so here you have a large voltage, little current, and this, when it gets to your house, is a step-down transformer because nobody wants to plug into 50,000 volts. And this would be a little voltage, bigger current. All right, so little voltage, bigger current. And we use that because, if you'll remember, what carries energy? It's the electrons bouncing around. So if your electrons are bouncing around, they can do more. More electrons, you can send them more places. So now you have more electrons to carry that charge, and you can power your household devices. So if you have a lot of electrons bouncing around in this power line right here, what are they going to do? That's right. They're going to heat up that wire. So what would be better? Not having as many electrons, but having each one carry more energy. That way they're less likely to run into each other. So the reason you step it up is so you transfer the same amount of energy, but you're sending fewer electrons so they don't get hit. So you don't lose as much as heat, and your wires don't burn, and your whole civilization doesn't burn. It's like those commercials. You know, you've seen the ones where it's if cable goes out, and then it ends with now you're running through the Amazon from know, wild bears. I don't know why they have bears in the Amazon, but go with me. So that's it. So your power lines don't melt down. And that is it. If you have any questions, please email me, and I hope this has been an informative and interesting. If you have any comments or anything you want me to clarify, just let me know. Thanks. Well, I thought it'd be a good thing to add a recap to this presentation, and since you stuck around, you thought it would be good too. So here it goes. In this video, we've talked about transformers, which convert voltages. And all of it is just based on this fact right here, where you have a primary winding source, you run an alternating current through it, current changes the magnetic flux, or field, in here by making the mains lines up, which changes the flux through this loop, which induces a second voltage. That works because of Faraday's law, which we just talked about, and you come up with the fact that the ratio of these two voltages in your first coil and your second coil is equal to the ratio of the number of turns. So it's a purely geometric factor. We talked about power, how power in coil 1 is the same as power in coil 2. So that's what you want to set equal. If you have a higher voltage in coil 1, it means you have a higher current in coil 2. But the product of the voltage and current will always be the same. And in case you need to reach me or have any questions, that's my email address. So feel free to send emails, questions, comments, anything you'd like to cover or anything that wasn't clear. And I am more than happy to answer it for you. So thank you, and I will talk to you later.